For the congregation, please rise and face the processional cross <clears throat> and join me uh, in your bulletin with the, with the uh, dialogue. We gather this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord renew the face of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit. Let us praise our God together with the ancient words of Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. Oh, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord of all the I will sing praise to God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. And let us sing our gathering hymn, Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We sing for our Kyrie, Lord, listen to your children praying.
Let us pray. God of life, on this day you poured forth upon your church your spirit, through whom we are one body, the body of Christ. Unite us at your table, that we may be poured forth into the world, bearing witness to your grace and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the word. The first lesson is a reading from Numbers. <coughs> Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsibly Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right, and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name is sake, Lord, forgive my sin, for it is great. Who are they who fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. They shall dwell well from prosperity, and their offspring. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him and will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. The second lesson is a reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly there came down from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams." Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, 
and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, this he said about the Spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I invite kids to come forward. Oh, we got the soft spot to sit. Oh, that's good. Yes, okay. How are you two? Good? Oh, okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we see right there. Hello. Good morning. Um, all right, so who here has ever been thirsty? Oh, he's thirsty. Okay. How about like desert dry thirsty? You ever been? You ever been in, you ever been in desert? Oh, Okay, you got to get some more water during the day. You can't make it up all at once, you know, because that doesn't work out that way. Yeah. Oh, you had fun. One time we, we were traveling with our family, and we were going to make a picnic lunch, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and we were in a really hot, it was in summer, desert area, so we laid the bread out. While we were getting the other things, we came back. It was so hot. You know what happened to the bread? It, well, it actually toasted it. It's like it became toast in just a couple minutes. It was that dry. It just sucked all the moisture out of it. And so Jesus said that, all right, that's kind of like what happens to people when we get away from God. It's like we get dried up. We don't have what we need. So Jesus said, come to me, and you'll have living water. He's going to pour out his spirit. So I'm going to show you something. He was at a festival, and every day they would bring a, it was actually a golden picture, so you have to imagine this is golden, and they would go down to a pool, and they'd get the water, and they'd bring it up to the altar, and they would pour it on there. And Jesus said, see this? He said, that's like me. His word coming down, the Holy Spirit is like living water being poured out, and everybody who is thirsty can hear that water. Say, oh, I'm thirsty. And so anybody who's having trouble in life, Jesus is saying, are you hungry and thirsting for righteousness? Come to me, and I'll be like living water poured out. If you've got plants, if you've got anything that doesn't get any water, it just starts to wilt. But you put water back on it, everything springs up, and there's smiles again, and there's goodness, and everything good happens. That's what it's like with Jesus in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these girls, and I ask that you always refresh them in their life. Help them to know that the greatest refreshment of all comes to us when we are faithful to you, when we look to Jesus, and when your Holy Spirit blows in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. That's, by the way, what today's about. See on there, little flames on the pair, on those? That's because it's like the Holy Spirit came. Like a, like a wind in a flame. <laughs> Thanks for coming up. Mm-hmm. 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So the, right, the key is in that initial litany from Psalm 104 at the beginning, key verse. We're talking, talking to God in the psalm. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. It's like Ash Wednesday, honesty. But when you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Every last one of us needs renewal in the Lord on a regular basis. There's a deep and gracious purpose behind God's command that we keep the Sabbath holy. Now, is it just because he wants to tell us what to do? No, the purpose is we together need it. He draws us to a word that goes beyond human wisdom. He gives us a resilience that overcomes obstacles. He brings about a, a calm and a peace that you will not get in this world. It just isn't to be found. It's in the presence of the Holy Spirit. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And so you renew the face of the ground. We're here for renewal. It is good to be together with open hearts in the presence of the Lord. Because at the beginning of time, it says the Spirit, with that creative power, blew over the face of the waters, and God's voice boomed out, let there be, and all, everything came into being. So our very existence depends upon God. Well, wait a minute, I have it independently. No, you don't, actually. It's from God and we're, we're empowered by God. So it's the word and it's the spirit that uphold us. That truth is going to remain. If you forget that, that's where the tr trouble comes in. We'll get to that. But at the center of each sacred gathering, that's why we do this, is Christ. And this Bible, which was born of the apostles and the Holy Spirit working through them, bears witness to him. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Word and the Spirit. And what this tells us is that God made a, has left a track record in time. His mighty deeds. Some of those deeds are as lovely as the creation of a flower. Think of that, Almighty God. Think he's got all this stuff to do. He took time to, to create the delicate flowers. Both of these for anniversaries, by the way. And yet, he also did mighty deeds where he parted the sea and called the children of Israel to go between the waves. And he rendered the tomb and raised Jesus from the dead. You read and hear about God's sovereignty, how evil is judged. It does not get away with it, but also how there's grace and kindness and God, all through history, has always reached down to the humble and the honest to lift them up. That's what we're doing. Everything ultimately bears witness to God. Nature, scripture, even our own lives. Every knee shall bow before Christ. Now, there are mysteries that are still out there, but we know the heart of the matter. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. So that's what this is all about. How do people lose their way in this world? You know somebody in your life who's lost their way? Maybe that was you at some point. How does it happen? They neglect the story that really does run through everything. Now, that neglect can be intentional, could be unintentional. But either way, there's a false narrative that sets itself up inside of a person's life where God was meant to be. And of course, it's all dressed up to look like the real thing. Every single cult that's ever existed tries to make itself sound really close to the real thing. <clears throat> that's just how it does it. The values may even be similar to authentic ones. Until you look closely. But who's looking closely anymore today? Is anybody? The distractions 
demand our full attention. And then at some point, the idols become all-consuming. How do you explain the times in which we live right now, except to say this, that we have lost our way? But by the grace of God, we're here in remembrance that the way is still seeking us out. That God is still God, that the good shepherd is still out there. He's combing the landscape for lambs who will recognize their need and come to his call. Renewal is going to come to minds that are transformed by his spirit and his word. And so we center it on the mighty works of God. That's the Christian witness. It's been that way since Pentecost in the first time, the first year. It, it holds to a story, a, a narrative about who we are that's going to hold in the storm and in the wind, the heat of existence, because it's born of the wind and the flame. It can take it. It's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God who made all things can give you a, a strength to overcome the world. Now about Pentecost, well, it is one of the major festivals in the Christian calendar. But, quite obviously, it has some competition on Memorial Day weekend and graduation celebrations and maybe that first summer vacation of a family and so on and so forth. So all the years of ministry, it's like this is one of the majors, but it, it's just fighting so many things in society. Uh, and it's okay. We got it. Memorial Day is a great thing, so that's not a problem. But from a theological perspective, we've got to remember that this is the birth of the Christian church on earth. This is people going out into the world clothed with power from on high. So it's looking forward, even as we remember and give thanks for generations in the past. For example, there was Peter standing, giving that proclamation on that first Pentecost. He had just been hiding in fear and shame, locked in a room after all that happened during Holy Week. And now he's out there speaking publicly and fearlessly. Where'd that come from? He said that the, it came from the Holy Spirit. That's the only source of that power. And he said that the prophecy of Joel was being fulfilled in their hearing. And, he said, it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There will be renewal on a global scale. Now, there are other examples of that same Hebrew word for renewal. I looked it up. It's very interesting. Uh, it can also be translated as repair, but it's the same word, renewal, repair, or restore. So there was an instance in when Judea, the kingdom, had completely lost their way. Second Chronicles 15 tells us that the prophet Azariah comes up to the king of Jerusalem. His name was Asa at the time. They had really wandered away from why they even existed. And the Holy Spirit moved in the prophet to speak words and he said to the king, he said, you and all the people have got to return to the Lord or there will be dire consequences. Here's what it says, quote, As soon as King Asa heard these words, he took courage and put away the detestable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities that he had taken in the hill country of Ephraim. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was in front of the vestibule of the house of the Lord. So the people had gotten distracted. Everything's going just fine. They went off. And by the way, there's these pagan practices. Hey, it's all one and the same anyway. We can all offer our sacrifices in the mountains or under this tree. And, you know, all the paganism just started leaking in. And they let it fall away. And they did not honor the God who even gave them existence. And then they let the temple fall into decline. Because if you can worship anywhere on a hilltop or whatever, why go there? So the first thing that Asa did was he repaired the altar 
that stood in the open courtyard by which they brought their lambs and all of their sacred offerings to the Lord. It's really crucial. Renewal and repair went hand in hand. Psalm 5110, same word. I'm going to let you, this is going to be your, your big test. You've got to give me the second half of the verse, okay? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Okay, you passed. <laughs> but you still have got to stay for the rest of the sermon. <laughs> Create in me a clean heart, O God. Think about those words. This is holiness. Holiness doesn't say, I'm so holy, I don't need you, God. Holiness is something in us that says, I, I'm wandering away. My heart, my mind have a tendency. That is God fighting for you. That's God in the battle. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. The Holy Spirit renews the human spirit. God's word inspires our best words to others. One more example. Prophet Isaiah. These are words that would find their fulfillment in Jesus. He'd say, uh, the poor shall have good news proclaimed and so on. Right after that, this is what Isaiah said about everything that's, that's renewed through the Messiah. Quote, they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Yeah, but there's so much that's bad. You think the Holy Spirit can't blow new and repair the, the devastations of generations? Renew, repair, restore. Come, Holy <laughs> Spirit. This is a day when we uh, realize that God is in the fight for all that is good. And so do not let all the troubling stuff and all of the darkness get you down. You have a legacy that is beyond that and is bigger than that. And it comes by grace. This is all so clear and so good. Why wouldn't someone want to call on the name of the Lord? Don't they understand? Maybe they don't understand. You see, there's a lot of dust in the air around matters of faith. That's how the great deceiver likes it. Revelation 12, 9, the great deceiver. Or the father of lies from John 8. He loves to be busy. He thrives in slander. So if you can take down Christianity any way possible. And then when someone of the faith actually has a failing, a Christian, oh, the wicked one takes delight in that. Now if I can just draw a line between the failure of a Christian to the failure of Christianity, just, you know, draw that line, get people doubting the whole thing. That's the best of all. For the evil one. We've got to know not to take his tricks. What God's people should know is that every Christian stands in need of the cross of Christ every day. Just like everyone else. Even the ones doing the bad mouthing. They need Jesus just as much as us. Unfortunately, receptivity to faith may be blunted by a whole bunch of things, all sorts of things going on. You know them. But one of those things is just a plain old willfulness. The desire to be our own God. This is all the way back to the Garden of Eden. My life, my agenda, my way. How do you do outreach in this? What does evangelism look like in this kind of a context? It can be difficult. One might even conclude, according to our human wisdom, that it's not possible. It just doesn't seem to work. And then along comes St. Paul and says, you're right. If you're going to go by human wisdom, it's not possible. But we're not operating by human wisdom. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. No one can say... Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Oh, so there is possibility in the world. Stay in the Spirit. Stay in the Word. 
do your work, be ready to bear witness, and God in his own time will handle the opening of hearts and minds. Because miracles do happen. Some people have taken a pretty hard path through this world, and they find themselves quite ready for something different when the Lord blows through their life, works on them through the law of consequences or something. Will there be anybody there when they're ready? Do we assume that if they weren't ready at one point in their life, that they'll always not be ready? That would be an assumption on our part. It's not what God does. God is ready when people are ready. So we need to be there too. Which brings us to Peter's proclamation at the end. That part about being saved. Saved from what? First of all, from ourselves. <laughs> Our, our foolish selves. Luther is going to add from the catechism, save from sin, death, and the devil. Pretty good list there. Sin, death, and the devil. Peter is going to add in this reading, saved from this crooked generation. He just calls it out. <laughs> He's in what's supposed to be the best place on earth. And he said, saved from this crooked generation. In other words, we don't have to resign ourselves to decline and corruption. Oh, well, just the times we live in, better go along with it. What? We are recipients of a legacy and a power that is everlasting, and it is good and holy and true. You don't just give in, you fight, but you fight with the weapons of the Spirit. Everything you've got for all of your days till your breath is gone. And then God will breathe into you again and you'll be a new creation one day. But until that day, you give it everything you've got for the Lord, just how it is. Peter looked out on the ancient city of Jerusalem. They had cast out Jesus. Jerusalem was in the, a Roman Empire that was fading towards corruption and degradation. Is that where the renewal was going to come from? Was there life in those things? Well, I'll just be a Roman citizen. Well, I just I go to Jerusalem. And the apostles actively engaged the people of the world, but they did not do it according to the world's terms. Here's a great quote from a, a very bright theologian. By the way, he lived through World War II and wrote in that time when Europe was devastated. I mean, you've just got buildings laying in ruins, probably still smoldering, and so on. Think of it that way when, when he writes. The Christian contribution is not a reformed system, but reborn people, men and women, enabled to transform, or to, excuse me, to transcend the misfortunes of life and to resist the influences degrading life. They kept their eyes fixed on the light that is in Christ, not on the darkness of the world. And quite unwittingly, the light began to shine in them and from them and penetrate the darkest corners of the world, which was going to pieces. Every generation of Christians has always looked out on the world falling apart. Every generation of Christians was called to go out there in the power of the Spirit that creates and renews. This is how it's always been. This is the time in which we live. We're called into this to say, come Holy Spirit, blow across our nation. We need it. Blow across the world. Breathe life and a holy passion into our hearts and minds. Renew us in our homes and in our families and in our churches and our communities. Until Jesus comes, this is the calling of the church in every generation, no matter how difficult it is, to live by a power that God supplies. And he does. The Holy Spirit like a flame. Christ filling our cups to overflowing with goodness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please rise as we sing. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we join in prayer. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring the renewal we need. Breathe new life into your church today. Form us into the one body of Christ. Open our ears, minds, and hearts to the everlasting word and send us out in the kingdom mission so that the peace of Christ may be welcomed by many and lives may be reconciled to the will of the Heavenly Father. Inspire us to seek the greater gifts of the Spirit, faith, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O Lord, for the Christian church to be mission-driven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, inspire us to be better witnesses on behalf of the risen Lord Jesus. Bless this congregation as a mission center. Bless our district, Bishop Selbo, all NALC staff and ministries, all of our local, regional, and international outreach partners, as well as faithful brothers and sisters in other denominations. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the needs of the world. Holy Father, your blessings abound in our everyday lives, but troubles abound too. Inspire within us gratitude for the good and hopeful persistence amid challenges. Renew our country as well as nations around the world. Cast out evil and cause righteousness to flourish. Protect all who face war or calamity of any kind. Guard those who honorably stand in harm's way on behalf of others. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we lift up those who served our country, many of whom have been laid to rest. May they rest in peace until Jesus comes again and there are no more wars or rumors of war. Bless the memories of all loved ones from whom their labors rest. Keep them and keep us in the grace of the risen Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray on behalf of those who need healing in any way. Paula Connerly, Holly Ernst, Ruth Harden, Carmen Hasdorf, Tim Lanthrop, Kimberly Long, Sue Robinson, Clarice Shirier, Dave Stevenson, Isaac Wilson, Andrew Good, as well as those whom we name in our hearts. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. time we have the receiving of the offering and an offering of sacred music.
Rise as we sing our offertory, let the vineyard be fruitful. join now in a prayer of confession. Heavenly Father, on this day when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all who cherished the name of Jesus, an unbelieving world mocked and questioned the apostles. As we remember and celebrate the event that was the turning point in history, we also confess our own worldliness, all of the doubts, the unbelief, and the endless, fruitless pursuit of false idols. We need your grace. By the power of the Holy Spirit and the light of the resurrection of Christ, scatter the lingering darkness of sin and breathe new life into us. Restore us, O Lord. Make us instruments of your everlasting peace, clothed with holy power from on high. Forgive us and use us for the glory of the kingdom. Prepare our hearts to receive this sacrament as Jesus comes to us in his holy supper. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just a word about communion. Yes, this is the bread. We froze it from when the uh, First Communion students uh, made the bread. And so if that looks familiar, and uh, these are indeed God's gifts for his people.
Would you please rise? May the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you please be seated for a, just a minute or so. I've got a few announcements, but there's enough that we need to highlight them. First of all, you hopefully you saw in your thing any graduates in your family, college, high school, whatever it may be, we want to celebrate with you. Um, and the uh, flowers today, two of them, to the glory of God by George and Barbara Suggs in honor of their uh, wedding anniversary, uh, and also Richard and Jane Coggan in honor of their 25th wedding anniversary. And, and they told me for the big celebration of it, they're going to the Dayton Dragons game with the church on Tuesday night, <laughs> which leads right into the second announcement. Uh, that is a, a 7 o'clock game Tuesday, and... For those who are, wanted to go and signed up, uh, 5 o'clock we're meeting here, and then we'll carpool over. And uh, we trust that the tickets will be here. I don't know if they're here or not yet. You, okay. Okay. We do have them. Good. So tickets will be here. And uh, let's see. That leads to our next one. Next Saturday, uh, there will be the men's group meeting at 730 at Bob Evans. Uh, so if you want to come out for that. Next Sunday, we turn over to our summer schedule. It's June, and we're going to have one service at 9.30 through, th through the summer months. And what we will do, communion is kind of difficult outside, so the communion Sundays will be inside, and the non-communion ones will be outside, weather permitting. So first, third, and if there's a fifth, we'll be in. Second and fourth will be outside. Uh, but it's always going to be at 9.30. So, uh, and then for that second Sunday, which is June 11th, our first one outside, where uh, the elders are sponsoring a picnic for us all, and uh, so you're all invited. We do ask, in, in terms of ordering the meat and the drinks, that people sign up. There's a sign-up sheet in the back here, and just write down how many people will be coming, so we get a ballpark number, and then also they've divided up according to alpha, alphabet um, as far as the extra things that people can bring to make it a True picnic. So if you go and sign up, take a look at where you fall in there. If you want a salad or dessert or something like that, and we will be all set for the 11th. Starting next week, uh, we will be having what I'm calling a summer Sunday study, and you got to say it seven times fast as well. <laughs> and that is going to be after worship uh, on, on most of them. The picnic we won't. Uh, there will be a few Sundays when I'm off doing things, maybe the national gathering or so. And we want those, but um, we're going to study Galatians, and it's we're in the we're in the time of the Reformation, 500 years, the anniversary, and uh, uh, I've got a whole bunch of quotes. Luther had famous lectures on Galatians, so I've got a whole bunch of quotes to be tied in there. We'll work through the chapters, and it's one of the one of the great things about the freedom uh, we have in Christ, and uh, as it says uh, in the in the bottom quote there. If the doctrine of justification is lost, the whole of Christian doctrine is lost. It's just really central to who we are by grace through faith. That's what we're doing there. Um, don't forget about VBS. Uh, T Tina said, you haven't heard a whole lot about it because she had, oh, I don't know, a daughter graduating from college and a high schooler graduating. And so they've been a little busy. But uh, if, you want, if you have something you want to contribute, uh, Tina Ebright, if you want to be part of it, and so on and so forth. But she promises that more information will be coming. And for the time being, keep her and, and her family in prayer just in all their celebrations and transitions. Uh, I think that's it. Anything else? Covered it all. Okay. 
Then if you would uh, please rise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. blessed on this Memorial Day weekend with memories of loved ones, and we sing, O oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.